Hey guys, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel. And yesterday I was procrastinating on Twitter, like you do. And I saw a tweet from an author that really caused me to pause and think. So in honor of that, I made a short list of things that I've learned from authors that I didn't get from their books, either from social media or meeting them in person or whatever. <laughs> These are the lessons that I've learned this year. And so without further ado, let's get right into it. The author who actually made me stop and think about it is Angie Thomas. This chick. I learned a lot from Angie Thomas this year and she had her groundbreaking novel The Hate You Give come out very early on in the year and it's just been a whirlwind. But what made me stop this time was that she has changed her Twitter name which I've been following for a while but every time I see it I just get a little bit of a chuckle because now rather than being her name it's I don't cast films or know when trailers will drop and I just think that is so funny. <laughs> but I also feel really bad because it's been an interesting thing watching her experience and she's tweeted a lot about it which I do have one specific thread which I will link down below that I highly recommend everyone check out which was her basically saying like y'all writers have nothing to do with this and not only that but to be attacked over the choices of the actors made in the movie is just mind-boggling and also there's a whole lot of implications involved and in why this one movie was being attacked and anyways go check it out it's really interesting to see and it's something that I don't think I'd ever really considered authors would be attacked for. To watch that has just been interesting. The next lesson that I learned is about second book pressures and I learned it from the Pub Crawl podcast which you guys should all check out as a great podcast. But it's something that I've never considered because I'm not published yet and basically they were saying revel in this time. Revel right now not being published because after you are published you're basically a public figure and not only are you a public figure you know potentially having to go to book festivals now having to market yourself and do all this stuff you have all the pressure of the second book. You know, meeting numbers, exceeding numbers, worrying about how your other numbers are doing, hitting certain deadlines, and just, oh. I guess I only see the pros of being published and it was a very good realization for me to, and that I really should appreciate what I have now and the basic anonymity and just the freedom to write whatever I want. I'm not contracted to do any certain thing. I can just write whatever I feel like writing and not have to worry about prioritizing certain stories over others if I don't want to or if I'm not feeling it or whatever. The third lesson that I learned is from Jason Reynolds and it's basically just about the power that an author can have. At a book festival I attended he said he purposely had Patina be the second book in his track series because he realized that younger boys may not be as interested to read about a female main character except if they were already involved and interested after Ghost and he knew that they would continue on the series and that this might be the only way he could get them to read a female main character and it's just amazing that he had the foresight and he decided to take what power he had and make that possible. And it just reminded me of what an author can do. The next lesson I learned was also from Jason Reynolds, so I just learned a whole bunch from that guy. <laughs> from the same festival at the same panel. He said that they were talking beforehand, just the authors amongst themselves, and saying how if they had the choice, they wouldn't want to be mega super popular. As a writer who's not published, thinking about how popular you can be or all the movies they're gonna make off of your book and whatever is just like the dream. But to hear someone who's already published and successfully multiple times over say that he doesn't want that kind of insane popularity was so fascinating. But he said that Veronica Roth has spoken really openly about that level of success and notoriety and so has John Green and basically the mental anguish that that can bring sometimes and I thought that was so fascinating and again just a lesson to be appreciative of what you have now and just kind of I don't know I don't know where this is going. Thanks Jason. <laughs> The fifth lesson that I learned and just one that I continue to learn is just how hard the publishing industry is, even for already published authors who have been published multiple times over like V.E. Schwab. And on her Twitter she talks openly about all things writing and publishing and you should totally check her out. I'll link her down below too. I think we forget that the publishing world is an industry and it's a business because everyone in it loves books but at the same time that doesn't mean that every book written even by published authors is going to be treated in the same manner. You want it all to be uplifting stories and it's just, it's not. It's an industry. It's trying to make money. It's all sorts of things. You hear published authors talk about how one series wasn't picked up or they had a series that got chopped down unexpectedly and they're not going to get to finish it or they're not going to get to do all this stuff and then they're contracted for other books and other places and it's just, 
again, appreciate what you have, but also when you want to go into this industry, you have to have the foresight that it is a business and that sometimes the business is going to suck a little bit. The sixth lesson that I learned is about how fast things can happen. A great example of this again is Angie Thomas, who I talked about earlier, because this is her debut year. She debuted her book in 2017. They're already filming a movie about the book. I think they might have actually already wrapped that and it's just insane how fast it all seemed to move but then you forget how much time it took to write the book, get an agent, get it published. And then not only that, it's not like this is the first book she's ever written. It's just the first one that got published. So there's something to be said for it seeming to go really fast and then also how much work and how many years she put into something before it really took off that way. Another great example of this is Alexa Dunn who is on YouTube. She has a great channel and I will again link her just somewhere. <laughs> And Alexa talks about how she had an agent, she had to switch agents, she was contracted and then she wasn't. And it's just, you should totally watch her videos. They're super informative, but also just to see that like everyone's process to get into the industry is different. And I think it always takes longer than you think it would. There's always a lot more work going on to get to be this overnight success. This is a lesson that I learned at another book festival and I wish I knew who said this. I don't have it in my notes and I so regret not putting it down, but this, phrase has been echoing through my head over and over again throughout the year. And it is. We expect athletes and doctors and whatever to be the best of their profession after tons of time practicing, but think somehow that because we're literate, we can write a book. Boom. I think this is an amazing quote for two things. One, that we shouldn't be so hard on ourselves. Like writing a book is tough. It's tough. And just because you can understand the language you want to write the book in, and just because you can speak it and write it and all sorts of things, doesn't mean that you can write a book. It's a lot of fun. Don't get me wrong. I love writing. I wouldn't be here if I didn't love writing. Talking about writing. That's a lot of writing. <laughs> and also, I wish I could explain this to every person who says, I have a great idea for a book you should write. Or how long is it going to take until it's published? And blah, blah, blah. <laughs> The eighth lesson that I learned is the importance of marketing. And I've learned that from a lot of my friends who are self-published or indie published and all of the stuff that they can do between podcasts and YouTube. And just, it's insane the amount of work that goes into marketing yourself, but also from published authors. And nothing more exemplifies this and marketing done well to me than James Ponty. He has a book series called Framed. And when he was going around to different book festivals, he would carry a frame with him so he could take selfies and take pictures with people. And I just sat there and watched it and was like, that is brilliant. It is so smart and everyone wanted a picture and just, amazing. The ninth lesson that I learned is more specifically writing based and even more specifically mystery writing based. And that came from Justine Lapalastier who said that you should look up the accidental death reports that they put out every year and use that when trying to come up with how someone was murdered because there is no better way to frame a murder and to have a murder interwoven into your book than if it looks like an accident. And she says she gets so much inspiration from it. And I think this was a lesson not only very specifically to mystery writing, but also that inspiration could come from a lot of places. And I just thought that was so cool. And speaking of inspiration or something, the 10th lesson that I learned is just like the power of willing something into existence. <laughs> Julie Murphy wrote her book Dumplin' and she wrote about Dolly Parton and Dolly Parton songs and then it turns out that Dolly freaking Parton is going to be writing an original song for the Dumplin' movie. What? She literally wrote something into existence. How amazing is that? And more Dolly Parton music. Like what more could you want? <laughs> I'm just, yeah, inspiration? I don't even know what I would call that. It's just... It's so cool. That is so, 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 so cool. All right, those are the 10 lessons that I learned from authors that weren't in their books. Because of course, we learn so much from books and I don't actually know that I could make a list potentially long enough to list all of the things that I learned from books this year, which maybe I'll think about doing that in 2018, just keeping a running list of things that I learned from books. Who knows? But now I want to turn it over to you guys. I have a whole bunch of questions. And the first one is, what did you learn from authors this year that wasn't in their books? And then also, what did you learn if you have a specific lesson that was from a book that's just really resonated with you? And finally, do you have any authors or writers that you absolutely adore and that you love to follow on certain social medias? Comment down below and let me know. I'd love to give them a follow. Thank you guys so much for watching. and I will see you all very soon with a new video. Bye.